Welcome to my lecture online. In the previous video we were taking a look at the radial equation of motion. Now we're going to take a look at the azimuthal. Is that how you pronounce it? Azimuthal? <laughs> azimuthal equation of motion. I can't pronounce that word, but anyway, it's the motion in the azimuth. All right. Now, starting with the concept of the angle of momentum, we know that it's equal to the cross product of the, the uh, position vector and the momentum, also written as m times v. And then if we take the magnitude of both sides, we can say that the magnitude of the angle of momentum must be equal to the magnitude of that cross product. Now, since the angle is typically close to 90 degrees, and we know that the sine of 90 degrees is equal to 1, we can simply say that the magnitude of L is equal to rmv. Now we realize that the velocity along the path of the planet is equal to the angular velocity times the radius r. Of course, the radius is always going to change. And omega is also going to change, omega being d theta dt, theta being the angle here displayed. And remember that the position vector again depends both on r and theta. So what we then have is we then have uh, v replaced by omega times r, and then we end up with the angle of momentum being m r squared times omega. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take the derivative of this with respect to time, and of course we know that when we take the derivative of the angle of momentum, we should get zero because there's no torque, therefore no change in the angle of momentum, and then we multiply that by 1 over r, we get the following. So we take the ddt of this right here. Now m is a constant, so we can move that out. And then we have a cross product, so we take the first times the derivative of the second, plus the second times the derivative of the first. And then we can write d omega dt as the uh, derivative, or we can write omega as the derivative of theta with respect to time. And then we take the second derivative of that, so we end up with the second derivative of theta with respect to time. So then we get m over r times r squared times the second derivative in the angle with respect to time plus omega times 2 times r times the first derivative of the position of the distance of the um, position vector or the magnitude of the position vector. Remember these are magnitudes. And then when we multiply this back in we get mr times the second derivative of the angle with respect to time plus 2 times the mass times the angular velocity times the first derivative of the distance to the planet with respect to time and we know that that must equal zero because we know that the angular momentum is zero so when we take the derivative of the angular momentum the derivative of zero is still zero and so we end up with this equation right here which is known as the azimuthal equation of motion and so that's our second equation that we derive for the motion of a planet around the sun, again another differential equation, and now we're going to link these up to the Kepler's laws, the equation we get from Kepler's laws, to see how they match up. So stay tuned and we'll show you how to do that. Alright, is that a wrap for today?